Well, my first guest has appeared in over 40 films, including his breakthrough performance in the cult classic, Harold and Maude. Please welcome Bud Court. How nice to meet you. How nice to meet you. Actually, we've met. I know we did. I, I just can't remember. We were at a party, and we were standing next next to each other, and we didn't say, we're, I was shy to meet you. Maybe uh, yeah, I'm really you shy. were shy, too. Yeah. And then suddenly... Unless I'm I, drunk. I, I, grabbed party, party, party. <laughs> I, know. I grabbed you, and I said, my God, that's Phil Spector. Do you remember it? Yeah. It was Phil Spector. It was at Ed, uh, Eric and uh, uh, Janice's wedding ring that's or right something. and we saw phil specter oh we my saw god the that's right living creator the, the legend wall of sound yeah the wall of sound yeah and he was actually out he was in the flesh yeah yeah it was scary and i was actually <laughs> out and you were and actually, I was actually out too out. it yeah, was a, what yeah. a night yeah it was a triple header yeah. i think you stay home probably as much as i do uh i actually do yeah i uh i i live in a little log cabin in los Feliz, and uh i uh you know, at night I'll, I'll I'll walk around a little bit, but you know there are a lot of gunshots during the day, so yeah, yeah, lost really yeah. yeah. Are you afraid to go outside? Um, only when the sun is out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have the same problem. I really, really do. Yeah, you know, uh, I just came back from Cannes, France, and uh, what'd you do over there? I had a western that opened there, um, directed by Dwight Yoakam with uh, <gasps> Billy Bob Thornton. And, Why was uh, I not in that one? I know. I know, you should have been Vince Vaughn. I mean, all the Fondas. Why was I not in that? You were unavailable. I know. You were, you I don't ever leave my house. Really? Yeah, because I figure you're like that. Am I in it's your house It's hard to now, leave. Or? Well, that's why I had to build this set that's like a living room, because I don't like to leave my house. We're both blonde now, too. I, I noticed that. You're old. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, my here, God, are you old. Here is the best question that I got asked in Cannes. They said, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> I swear they asked this question. They said, what is it like to be a living legend <laughs> and to look at your image as a 20-year-old on screen and to be old? What did you say? I said, well, you know, <laughs> thank you. I, I, I don't really compete with myself. You know, uh, all my little performances are like little, you know, distant cousins. Right. You know, so I, you know, maybe I'll see them once or twice a year and I'll say hello. But let's talk thing. about this unforgettable character that you created. What, what was that? You know, you know the movie. You don't want to say anything because they won't give you any damn money. I'm oh. so mad at them. Who are these people? I think she's talking about Harold and Maude, and unfortunately. All right, I'll just talk for you. You know, they're not giving him any money. They're, it's the 30th anniversary of the movie coming out, and he doesn't get any money. It's a classic. It's like one of one of the five greatest of films ever made in this country. <laughs> he created the most unforgettable character that you've ever seen breathtaking in in your acting because it was Thank incredibly you. sensitive you, and uh, like oh my god it was like the most sensitive male character i've ever seen on film thank you i actually i brought it with me i got the french academy award for it um it's called the crystal star it was before they had the um uh the caesar and and I was the only other American other than James Dean and Henry Fonda to get it. Isn't that and, fantastic? And um, I was sitting in a little cafe. Talk about profits not being allowed yeah. in their own country. Well, check this out. I was sitting in a little cafe in France, and this little old lady came, walked by me and did a double take, and she said, Monsieur Court. I said, we? Oui. And she said, what? Didn't the studio tell you? We've been looking for you. You've won our best actor. Oh, they Harold didn't even Damo tell you? They didn't even tell me. Now, here's the deal. I'll talk about it just a little bit. Um, How much do you hate show business? I love show biz, but I don't like this particular studio. I'll tell you why. Um, I get no residuals from sales of, you know, mm -hmm. videos for mm -hmm. Harold and Maude. And actors didn't really participate right. until after 1971. Yeah. And there's now a committee called the Committee for the Fair Deal, and they're going to Congress. They've got Ted Kennedy behind them and Barney Frank and oh, a lot good. of really good, good. you know, senators, uh, Dianne Feinstein, yeah. and they are fighting for not only me, but for Mickey Rooney, for right. Gloria I mean, Stewart. These fabulous, for, fabulous entertainers. And yeah, you know, well, you go, into, right. you go into a supermarket and you, and you see all the Andy Hardy movies, and He's not Mickey doesn't get a nickel, you know, and 
Harold and Maud is my annuity. And a couple of years back, I, I went to the studio and I said, I'd like to produce a laser disc for the 25th anniversary. I gave them all my ideas. We met for two years. And at the end of the second year, I got a call from somebody. They said, I'm in the valley and the laser disc is out. And they didn't even tell me. So that was a little irksome. They did nothing for the 25th anniversary whatsoever. They did take a few of my ideas for a couple other products. But Don't I, you love show business? Oh, I just love it. But I figured the 30th anniversary is coming up in about a year and a half. So I called again. I called the studio. They said, no plans for a DVD whatsoever. Uh, so I went to work. I've been working every day. I want to have channels, you know, with all the other actors who are surviving and interview them and the cinematographer, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I get a call this week from a journalist saying, can I interview you on my video <laughs> uh, magazine? I said, well, I guess. Why? And she said, well, don't you know the DVD's coming out? <laughs> so I'm now, like, on the warpath, okay? I'm on the warpath. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to promote it. But you know what? You just have to laugh it off at a certain point because it's so absurd and ridiculous. You'll eat yourself alive if you don't let go of it. I've got to eat something. Well, you know what I'm saying. I mean, I could sit here and, like, go absolutely insane at the stuff that's been ripped off of me, and I yeah. have. <laughs> you know, for instance. But, I mean, I couldn't even name the things. I couldn't even name them. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, it, you know, it's a crapshoot, and... Uh, but, you know, honey, that... look how fabulous I look. Yes, you do. Look how fabulous you look. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have this hair, by the way, because I'm doing a play right now. What are you called, doing? A uh, brand new play called An Oblong Man, and it's at the Stella Adler Theater. Please come see it. Brand what are you playing? I'm playing the Oblong Man. What is he? Uh, he's a man from Illinois who never got over the first girl who kissed him at the age of 15, and he goes back on the day of the moon landing to wow. look her up to see if she'll watch it on TV with him and he finds she's hospitalized with severe amnesia. Why didn't you play this part? Why didn't I? I know. Who's your agent? I don't have one. I think I'm going to need to get an agent. Well, we both have to. Maybe we could have a meeting after this. I think we should we'll, redo the movie. I Because I thought always that I, I was like, she's my idol. Ruth Gordon was just uh, the greatest actress. And in that movie, you know. You're too young. I would have to play Maud now, and you would have to play Harold. I think I could do that with no problem. I think you could. Could you too. play Maud? You'd have to shave. Uh, not necessarily. You know, she never shaved her legs. And uh, no, I'm kidding. I got to say about Ruth Gordon. Uh, you know, you worked with Meryl Streep. Yeah. I worked with Ruth Gordon. So, you know, yeah, I mean, two of the lucky, greatest living. What about you met Groucho ever. Marx? I used to live with Groucho. Yeah. You lived with Groucho. Yeah. I didn't know you lived with Groucho. Yeah. You did not live with Groucho. Yeah, I lived with him. I lived with him for about seven years over a you know nine year period. And, in fact, uh, he died in my arms. Tell me about Groucho. I mean, you lived with Groucho? Well, I used to call him my fairy godfather, which would really, like, get him nuts. Uh, <laughs> it's a long story. I'm going to bumper sticker it. We had the same psychiatrist. And I had just made Harold and Maud. My father was very ill. He had MS, and he was dying. And Groucho was living alone in this house in Bel Air. And uh, the doctor thought it would be a good idea to put us together. So he did, and uh, Groucho took this, you know, really strong interest in me and what was going on and, you know, the scripts that I was getting. And uh, he, first, I don't know when it began, but he, he started asking me to move in. And I said, look, you know, thank you. It's nice to have a, a friend. And, you know, no, 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 thank you. But then I got in a car accident. And he sent the car, and he said, look, you're moving in. I got a nurse here full time. You're moving in. So I moved in, and I, I basically never moved out. Wow. Yeah, he was just... The what was that mind like? I mean, was it like nonstop? It, it was totally fertile. It was nonstop. Uh, I mean, he just was the most outrageous guy, and you never knew what he was going to do. And... Uh, are they the, was it the Marx Brothers that went into some studio and started a fire in the guy's office? Yeah, I was thinking about that this week. No, but they really did that, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah, I think it was Warner, Jack Warner. Jack or Warner's office, and they, yeah. and they tore up all his furniture and started mm -hmm. a fire, and mm -hmm. they were sitting there naked with yes. marshmallows over it when he walked <laughs> when he in. Walked in. <laughs> it's true. How genius is that? It's true.